The laws of nature in our universe usually express themselves as forces, but in the case of orbital mechanics, we are interested in calculating trajectories, which is the same thing as position of a spacecraft over time. And luckily for us, we can use Newton's second law to calculate the accelerations due to these forces in nature. And we do this because acceleration is a first derivative of velocity and the second derivative of position with respect to time. Therefore, starting with acceleration, we can integrate twice to calculate orbital trajectories. We can see the derivatives relationships in equation form on the top left between acceleration, velocity, and position. And on the bottom right, we see that relationship expressed using integrals. In this video, we'll be going over in detail the relationships between acceleration, velocity, and position, which will be extremely important for when we implement these differential equations into Python and solve them using numerical integrators, which is how all the animations and plots are made for these videos. And if you stick around to the end, I'm going to show all the Python that I use for the acceleration, velocity, and position plots that are shown here on the screen and show where they are on the GitHub repository for this channel. This is the second video in the series of Fundamentals of Orbital Mechanics, where we'll be going over ordinary differential equations and how they apply in orbital mechanics. And if you haven't checked it out yet, the Space Engineering Podcast is also on this channel, including one clip here where we discuss different ODE solvers and why JPL uses an atom solver for their orbital mechanics numerical integration. So the Space Engineering Podcast is also available on Spotify, Google Podcasts, and Simplecast, and I'll have all these links in the description. So from the last video, we saw that Newton's universal law of gravitation gives us a gravitational force between the large body and the small body in the two-body problem. Then, from Newton's second law, we solve for the acceleration of the small body, which gave us these two equations, where the top left is the scalar form of the acceleration equation, which states that the magnitude of the small body's acceleration is equal to the large body's gravitational parameter called mu, divided by the distance between the center of mass of the large body and the small body squared. And from that, we get the vector form of the equation, which works for 2D and 3D, where we must add the negative sign at the front here because the acceleration due to gravity is pointing in the exact opposite direction of the position vector of the small body. And so the plot on the right shows a Molniya orbit in green, which is a highly eccentric orbit, with a representation of Earth's gravitational field as the quiver plot or all the arrows on the plot. So in this plot, the strength of the gravitational field and therefore the acceleration is shown by how dense the arrows are and by their color. So the closer that you are to the Earth, the larger the accelerations of the spacecraft, which can be seen with all the pink arrows just above the Earth's surface. And then the farther away that you get, the smaller the acceleration, which can be seen by the more spaced out arrows that are more blue. The acceleration equation we get from Newton's universal law of gravity is an ordinary differential equation because acceleration is a first derivative of velocity and a second derivative of position with respect to time. And we say ordinary because it's not something like a partial differential equation. So we can see this in equation form on the left in two differently commonly used notations. Well, on the top is a Leibniz notation where the d's represent differentials or infinitesimally small changes in a variable. And on the bottom is the Newton or dot notation where the dots here represent time derivatives. So a single dot is a first time derivative and the double dot is a second derivative with respect to time. So as we often see, the laws of nature give us forces which we can then solve for accelerations, which we then need to integrate in order to calculate what we really want, which is position with respect to time, since that is a trajectory of a spacecraft or an asteroid or any other body that you want to analyze. And we also want velocity in a lot of cases, but as we'll see in the next slide, we solve for velocity on the way to solving for position. Then to solve for position, we start with the acceleration, integrate once to get the velocity with respect to time, and then integrate the velocity to get the position with respect to time. And note that the position and the velocity together create six numbers, x, y, z for each, we use to describe the orbital state of a spacecraft. And this isn't the only way to describe the state, there also exists other ways like the capillary, capillary and orbital. Then to solve for position, we start with the acceleration and integrate once to get the velocity with respect to time. And then we integrate the velocity to get the position with respect to time. And note that position and velocity together create six numbers, x, y, z velocity and x, y, z position, that we can use to describe the orbital state of a spacecraft. And this isn't the only way to describe the state. There also exist other ways like the Keplerian orbital elements or the equinoctial orbital elements. And don't worry, we won't be solving these integrals by hand. That's why we have computers and ordinary differential equation solvers, which will be the topic of the next video. 
And as a side note, if you're confused by the notation of what does it mean to take a derivative of a vector or the second integral of a vector, it's nothing complex. It's just a little notation trick to package three equations into one. So in reality, each equation here is actually three equations, one for the x, one for the y, and one for the z components of the vectors. So again, it would be, this would be the representation of the x part of this vector equation. So again, nothing fancy. It's just a way to make everything a little bit more compact. So to make things more concrete, we're going to go ahead and take a look at what the acceleration, velocity, and position over time look like for an equatorial circular orbit. So in this case, there's only going to be motion in the x and y axes, since this is going to be planar. And we can see that in the plots that it's only the red and the green that actually have motion here, where the blue in this case is the z component of the acceleration, velocity, and the position are all zero over time. And we can see that it's a circular orbit orbit because the norm or the magnitude of the position and the magnitude of the velocity are all constant over time, which is characteristic of a circular orbit. So using the relationships that we know for integrals, that the integral of a function is the area under the curve, and then that the derivative of a function is equal to the slope of that function, we can start to actually analyze the relationship between acceleration, velocity, and position. So we start with the acceleration where initially we have a negative acceleration in the x-axis, which is noted by the red. And initially there is zero velocity in the x-direction for the spacecraft. So as a simulation starts, the acceleration is negative. So the area under the curve here is negative. So we should expect the velocity to be negative. And then using the relation that the derivative of velocity is acceleration, which is the slope. So when the x here hits zero, we should expect that the slope of the velocity should be zero for the x direction, which we find that that is true here. And then if we go now one step down, where we know that the derivative of position is velocity, we should then again expect that when the velocity in the x direction gets to zero, we should expect the slope of the x position to be zero, and we can confirm it like that. So I encourage you to pause the video and kind of take a look more at what's going on here and other relationships in this plot, such as that when x is at its maximum for velocity, the y is equal to zero. And the same thing here, when the y is at its minimum, the x is equal to zero and why that would be true for a circular orbit like this. And let me know in the comments if you have any questions about it. So now that we've taken a look at a simple case of a circular orbit, we can then take a look at a more complex case like a highly elliptical orbit, which is shown here on the top right, which is a Molniya orbit. And it's highly elliptical because there is a big difference between the point that is farthest away from the Earth and the point that is closest to the Earth. So let's start by taking a look at the position plots where we can see that there are some maximums here, which is for apoapsis, and some minimums where they're periapsis. And notice that for periapsis, the point at which the spacecraft is closest to the Earth, the velocity is at a maximum, and so is the acceleration. So we can take a step back to figure out why we would expect the acceleration to be largest when the spacecraft is closest to Earth, which we get from, the the, from Newton's universal law of gravitation which states that the acceleration due to gravity is equal to mu over r squared. So the smaller that r gets, the larger that the acceleration of gravity is going to be, which is confirmed by these plots that we see here. And the same case for when the, the object, the spacecraft, is at its maximum distance away, that the velocity is at a minimum, and then so is the acceleration over here. And again, I encourage you to pause the video here, stop and take a closer look at these plots, follow along and how when the velocity, say, in the x equals zero, again, the slope in the x direction is equal to zero and how that also applies to acceleration and then to the velocity. So I encourage you to pause it and just kind of think through the three relationships between the derivatives and the integrals of these three values. And again, let me know if you have any questions in the comments. So here's a Python script that I use in order to create the plot for the acceleration, velocity, and position that I showed in this video. So, and this is going to be posted on GitHub. So I'll leave a link in the description to the GitHub page. Here is a URL. And it's currently going to be in a spacecraft test branch uh, as of the time that I'm making this video, but eventually it's going to be merged into the main branch. So as usual from spacecraft import spacecraft, which is going to be what does the actual propagating of these ordinary differential equations and from orbit calculations or import orbit calculations is OC because for this, I'm going to need the two body ODE 
function just in order to be able to calculate the acceleration given that I already propagated the positions and the velocities. So it's kind of working backwards, uh, but you'll, you'll see how that's used. NumPy as MP is a pretty standard Python library. And then matplotlib.pyplot as PLT is the plotting library that does everything plotting, very powerful library. PLT.sal use dark background just because I like to use a dark background. Here's the orbital elements for Molnia orbit, a config dictionary, very small and simple for the spacecraft class. Then you instantiate um, a spacecraft object using the spacecraft class and this SC config dictionary. I just did this real quick because at one point I just wanted to get a plot of just the still plot of the Molnia orbit. Here we create mp.0 is just going to be the accelerations because we have the positions and velocities in the spacecraft class from doing the propagation. And now I just need to calculate the accelerations and the x, y, and z components over time, given that this already happened. So just doing that for n in range sc.states.shape0, which is just how many steps did the solver take or output uh, into these arrays. And from each one of those, uh, plug into the Excels array, the two-body ODE, which this is, again, going to be posted on GitHub, but the two-body ODE is just very simply just doing this, calculating the velocity or the acceleration, and then passing that into the ODE solver. Just calculating the velocity and the acceleration given that initial state, which is the position and the velocity. And then I also wanted to get the norms of these because I also want to plot the X, Y, and Z and also the norm values. So in that case, getting the R norms, the norms of the positions, SC.states, axis equals one, makes it so it takes the norm across each row. So each row, you get a norm. Same thing for the velocities and the accelerations. Then here, just getting fancy with matplotlib, um, you can just do subplots. Uh, I wanted to do seconds since the beginning, or hours since the beginning. So subtract the initial value and divide by 3600 to get to hours. And then plotting everything. Notice that this is LaTeX format, um, which is how you can make like the, the sub uh, the underscore notation and um, doing like this, like doing a fraction, uh, everything like that. Again, this will be posted on GitHub. So here it is. Uh, if you'd like to recreate this plot and then just have it for yourself and then just plt.savefig, you can just show it if you want. Again, you can just do something like plt.show if you wanted like that. So again, it'll be on GitHub and please send over any questions that you have in the comments about this script. So be sure to hit like and subscribe and put all your questions in the comments to help me out with the YouTube algorithm. And then the next video in the series, we're going to be going over ordinary differential equation solvers, so ODE solvers, how to actually plug them into Python as is shown here on the top right. So again, let me know if you have any questions about this video, anything confusing, anything else you'd like to see from future videos. And again, I have the Space Engineering Podcast on this channel. I'll have all the links in the description. And I'm also making this video series in Spanish for the Spanish speakers that are watching. Yeah, so again, please let me know any questions you have in the comments, and thank you for watching.